happening? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Man, beautiful day. Freedom Friday. We've got uh, Derek Schenk. Derek, how are you today? I am. I'm locked and loaded and ready to go. Awesome. Well, Derek, man, I, I'd love it if you could just share. Um, I know everybody, almost everybody knows you, but maybe the one person on this call that doesn't know you, can you share a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So uh, once again, my name is Derek Shank. I'm, um, I live outside of Boise, Idaho. I've been licensed since um, 05 and, uh, you know, got through 08 to 09 and 10. Some of you know what that was like. And so, you know, uh, I've been everything from a productivity coach, uh, a John Maxwell coach, a MAPS coach, a bold coach, a team leader of a real estate brokerage outside of uh, Seattle. And, you know, I, I, I coach some of the top agents and teams of all different brands, all different brokerages across the country. And, you know, this is, this is my passion. I love, I love to speak. I love to coach and I love to hear myself talk. So I'm glad that you have me here today. Man. And this is awesome. Well, and I know that we've been chatting a little bit about the market and I'm super excited about the current market because it just spells three things to me, opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. And so I know we're all putting together our plans for business planning for 2024. In fact, uh, we've got, we're flying in the best of the best. Viral Workman is going to be in Roseville on the 16th to do the business planning. And if you don't have your ticket, you need to get your ticket. If you don't have your airline, you need to fly and get there because it's going to be amazing. But in preparation for our business planning, none other than Derek Schenk, would like to, I want, he's going to share the three key areas to focus on for your business plan for next year. So Derek, rock and roll. All right, perfect. Thank you. All right. So <clears throat> what I want to do is, so how many of you by show of hands, you, you went to a business planning class, a great business planning clinic. You walked away with uh, everything all written out and a great plan. And then you put it in a drawer or on a shelf and never saw it again. Anybody? Yeah, we all, we all have, you know, and I have too. So that is why I, I really want to reach out to you guys today because the, the classes are great. The courses are great. You know, I taught business. I got a business planning class CE certified in my state a long time ago and, and, and taught it. And most people do it wrong. I even taught it wrong for the longest time. And so that is why I want to share with you is what has been what the missing key is. So you walk away with a, a revenue model. Some people call it economic model. And here is my GCI, my gross, my net, my volume, my units, my appointments. And you say, oh, this makes sense. And you put it in a drawer and you never follow it. It's because you were never connected to the goal. You go in there and you say, okay, my goal is $100,000. Why? I don't know. It's a nice round number. Well, cross it out. Or you say, oh, my goal is a million dollars. Why? Because the instructor said add a zero to whatever your goal was. And I understand that and I get that. But if you're not connected to that goal, you're not going to follow it. So my goal here today is for you to be better prepared walking into your next you know, business planning class so you come out with a better plan, right? The, the Verl uh, Workman one is going to be awesome. I've seen his workbook. He's going to cover a little bit of what I'm going to cover today. But we got two weeks to prepare. Most people walk into a business planning class. They don't have their numbers. They don't have a goal. They don't have a plan. So you just randomly put some numbers down. It goes, whoo, this makes sense. And you never look at it ever again. So that's why I'm here. I'm here to help prepare you so you walk it with a, a better plan. So first, we're going to talk about purpose. Write that down, purpose. The number one thing we got to figure out is purpose. Some people call it your why, your big why. I like to look at it as in what is your central purpose? Because I coach people of all different levels. I've coached you know, people who become rookie of the years and created teams. But some of the top people I coach, they say, Derek, I have no trouble in real estate. I have no trouble with the finances. But things, if nothing changes, I'm on the verge of a divorce or I'm on the verge of a heart attack. Right. So we got to figure out not just the numbers and the money. We got to figure out what is your goal? What is your why? And let's build a business to do that. So purpose. Let me tell you a quick story here. Anybody know who Andre Agassi is? Andre Agassi. All right. Really quick. So Andre Agassi, he had eight Grand Slams, an Olympic gold medal, two Davis Cups. And in April of 1995, he was number one in tennis player in the world, in the world. Now, in his book called Open, 
he tells a story. He says, you know, one day I looked in the mirror and I said, he said, what the hell is wrong with me? I am number one in the world and inside I feel empty. And a lot of times when people feel empty inside and they have that void, they fill that void with something. Sometimes it's bad relationships. Sometimes it's alcohol. Well, he went to meth. So Andre Agassi, even though he was number one in the world, he still felt empty inside and he turned to meth. And within two years, he fell to 141st. So what he said was, I had the wrong goals. So at his lowest, he said, I had the wrong goals. That's why he fell. And so he decided, okay, what is my why? What's my purpose, my passion, what I truly believe in? And he grew up outside of the uh, Las Vegas. And so he created kind of like a boys and girls club for disadvantaged kids in the Las Vegas area. So once he created that, he had a new purpose. He had a new goal. He still hated tennis. He hated it. He just had to be really good. And he used tennis as the vehicle to fund his purpose. So within two years, in 1999, he went back to number one again because he tied the action steps, the practice, the routines. He tied them into what his purpose was. And, you know, over time, uh, I think he's, he's donated over time over $185 million. He has donated to that school, and that school is now franchised all over the country. $185 million to his purpose and his passion. So he said, quote, now a game I always hated became a priceless gift. At last, my fame will have a purpose. So that's what we have to identify is your purpose. And everybody is different, right? So I believe in the power of words. So let's, what is the word purpose mean? The definition of purpose, it's a noun. And the definition says the reason for which something is done or created, or for which something exists. Why is it done? Why is it created? And why does it exist? So here's my question to you. Why do you do what you do? Why were you created? Why do you exist? And some of you may know, and I found 90% of adults have no idea. And if you don't know, it's okay. When this was proposed to me about a dozen years ago, I had no idea either. And it might not be overnight. The clouds don't open up and poof, it happens. It took me a month of deep mm. diving to figure it out. And if you know it, great, double down on it. And if you don't, let's take the time to do it. Let's put the work in. You got two weeks before the workman class. Let's put the work in and find out what that purpose is for you. And everybody's different. You know what Tom's is or Steve or Brett or, 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 or Patrick or Russ, anybody, they're all different and that's okay. Everybody can have their own. Once you identify that to the final numbers, okay, here's your volume, here's your units, here's your appointments every week and you put a purpose behind it, now you know why you're doing it. Because you're going to get discouraged at times. We all will. It is, people say when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. I don't believe in that. It's not... It's not willpower that's going to get you through the tough times. It's why power. The why power is going to get you through the tough times. Is it your family? Is it your faith? Is it family, fitness, friends? What is that for you? So number one, it's like def defining what that, that purpose is for you. You know, and there's simple exercises into identifying that. For, you know, asking yourself questions. Asking yourself questions as in, hey, if you won the lottery and you knew... Uh, you was guaranteed whatever you do with the money wouldn't fail, what would you do? If you had six months to live, what would be the must-dos before you die? And every one of us knows someone that passed away too early. Recently, I had a great friend. He said it was cancer. He said, you know, F cancer. I got this. We're going to get through it. He said that for six months. And then all of a sudden, I see he has started checking things off his bucket list. He never got it through them all. We have a chance and we have a choice. So what is that purpose and what does that purpose look like for you? That's the first one, the purpose. The next is priorities. What are your priorities? Well, let me go back to purpose. Let me give some examples. 
most business planning classes, they'll say, hey, what's your mission and vision and values? And that's great. That's mission and vision and values based on your business and based on your team or based on your brokerage. You need to come up with a purpose and priorities and values for you. I'll tell you why most business plans don't work. Because you have to create a life plan first. What does your ideal schedule look like? I don't know until you have a business plan. What's that business plan look like? I don't know until you create a life plan. Here's the goal and the challenge is for you to start working on that life plan before your business plan in a couple of weeks. You will walk away with a better plan, a personalized plan for you. So here's some examples. So my purpose statement is my purpose is to live up to my full potential, live a life of significance, and to do so by helping other people reach their full potential both personally and professionally. And why does that roll off my tongue? Because it's my purpose statement. I've had it for 10, 12 years. Here's an example of some other clients. My purpose is to empower myself and others to evolve to the healthiest and wealthiest version of ourselves. Another client said to inspire others to be curious and excel at their passion by setting an example with my work and my art. Another one says is to be a role model, inspire others to live authentically and abundantly. So what would your purpose statement be? Mission statement's great for a business and a team. What is your purpose, your central purpose statement? And the next is your priorities. What are you doing there real quick? I've got an example of mine. To serve the Lord, serve my health, serve my family, to serve others, and to have fun. So I thought I'd throw that in there. It's all about serving. So back to you, Derek. Thanks. No, I love that. And did you notice all the F words in there? (laughs) Right? Faith, family, fun. You you guys remember fun? Remember? You guys remember fun, right? Some of us are going, I don't remember the last time I had, this has been a tough, yeah, right? Yeah, we've had, we've had some changes, right? There's been some changes, but write this down. Control the controllables. You can't control the inventory. You can't control the interest rate. You can't control verdicts, <laughs> right? Control the controllables. So the next are the priorities, just like um, Tom, when you figure out what your priorities and values are, you can roll them into your purpose statement. So here's some examples for priorities, family, faith, fun, fitness, spouse, kids, hobbies, uh, personal development, serving others. Um, You know, it's whatever those are. And I would say determine, you know, what are like four, four or five of those priorities for you? If you pick 20, if you're focused on 20 things, you're focused on nothing. What are those priorities? And they're your priorities, nobody else's, right? Uh, John Maxwell has a great book called um, Put Your Dream to the Test, where you answer 10 questions. The first question is, is your dream really your dream? I come across full-grown adults all the time that are still working on their parents' dreams. Is it your dream, right? Your priorities, and yes, there's some good books, good podcasts say, hey, focus on these three, these things, do these five things in the morning. They may work. They may or may not work for you. What are your priorities? Right. Um, so what's your purpose? What are your priorities? Oh, I got to take a breath. I, I need some ahas. Who's who's writing stuff down? I've had three Red Bulls, so I, I have no slides. Just keep writing. But I need one or two ahas. Somebody give me some ahas that you're picking up. So I know that you're picking up what I'm throwing down. Tom shared. I need somebody else. Brett, I got a thumbs up from Brett. Someone else, who wants to share? What are you picking up? It takes why, why power, not willpower. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Good for you. What's, um, what's your why, Jackie? What's your purpose? <clears throat> um, to know him and make him known. I serve others and myself to live our best life. Yeah, I love that. I love that, I love Jackie. That. Good for you. I mean, we talk, what I truly believe in is everybody living up to their full potential, whatever that may be for you. And, you know, if, uh, you know, if you believe you were put here for a reason, are you living up to your full potential for why you were put here? Right. So I, I love, um, I love that answer. So I know some of you are going, oh, business planning, um, uh, business planning. Oh, we're going to talk about AI and, and social media. No, that stuff's great. But I'll tell you, I've seen great teams with great systems and models and great tools and great marketing, but it's all, it's, it's mindset is first and it's that life plan first. Why are you doing this? Are you doing it just to be number one? Are you doing it just to beat that team? 
you want to really fuel that fire, have a purpose and know what your priorities are behind that as well. And the next would be um, the values. Um, what are your values? Give me a second to find that page. I think I can, I can go without it. So this is this is one of the biggest mistakes I see out there. <clears throat> so like for an example, someone says, hey, uh, Derek, I want to join this team. Uh, do you think I should join them? Well, um, their splits are this, their marketing's this. It's like, do you know what their top three values are? They'll say, no, I don't. I say, do you know what your top three values are? And I will challenge them to come up with the top three values. When I was a team leader, some, someone says, I want to join a team. I say, great. I want, I'm going to put you in two different rooms. I want you to write down your top values. I want you to write down your top, value, top values. And then we put them together and see if they're similar. Because what I found is if someone joins a team and your values are not the same, yours is about faith and love and contribution. And someone else's is, is money and sales and world domination. Nobody's is any better than anybody else's. But if your values are not in alignment with the other person on your team, that the relationship will deteriorate over time and it won't last. This is what we have found. So um, uh, uh, psychologists have found that nothing creates internal trauma as in stress. Nothing creates internal trauma more when, when you're outside Actions and behaviors are not in alignment with your internal values. Let me say that again. Nothing causes more internal turmoil more than when your outside actions and behaviors are not in alignment with your internal values. If you have certain values and you are not living up, uh, can you describe what you see as a difference between your values and priorities? Okay, perfect. I will, I'll touch base on that. Um, so let me, let me give you an example of uh, values. Values, like here's a, like a value assessment. Values might be um, adventure, balance, calmness, uh, family influence, integrity, um, security, spirituality, stability, uh, variety, virtue, right? So the, the values are, are our compass. And what I challenge people to do is, okay, you know, what are those top 10 values? They come up with their top 10 values and they say, okay, great, find three. People go, three? Yeah, what are the top three? So those are the values. The priorities are going to be more like um, uh, personal development, family, finances, um, you know, stuff like that. So when we are not in alignment, if we don't, if we're not in alignment with our values, our brain knows it and our brain will beat us up and make us feel like crap. You know, your, your business is down and you're pointing at everybody, but you know, you're not lead generating. Your brain knows you're not lead generating and it will beat you up and make you feel like crap because you're not in alignment with the action steps and the behaviors to live up to your potential and, you know, the value. So it's identifying those values as well. So what is that purpose? What are your priorities and what are your non-negotiable? When you put values, put non-negotiables, no matter what, they're the non-negotiables. So we could talk about how to increase your business, how to, how to get more uh, agent attraction, increase your business and put your foot on the throttle. But if you are beating yourself up, uh, internal turmoil and stress by not living up to your potential and values, it's like a full, your foot is on the throttle and one foot is all the way on the brake. You say, why am I not getting anywhere? Why do not why do I not feel fulfilled? I'm number one in my area and I'm struggling at home. I'm I'm I have the money, but I don't have the fitness. Um, I struggle at home and it's affecting my mindset. My mindset affects my energy. My energy is affecting my finances. My finances are causing fights at home. It's they're all connected together. That's why I believe in like whole life coaching. They're all connected. Right. There's a word, arete. Arete means excellence in all things. It's an ancient Greek word, means excellence in all things. So you might foot, foot throttle on the business, but how is your health? And health is mental health, social health, physical health. It's aligning all those things to help everything else as well. So it's it's the purpose, the priorities, um, and aligning those those values. Now, when you have your priorities, let's say for an example, you're creating your life plan. 
what's that life plan look like? Let's say my priorities is is a, a family is a family uh, and fitness and and uh, financial security. Number one, this is what I want you to do before your next business planning class. If it's you know if it's you know the workman one or you have your own in your office or team or brokerage, whatever it looks like, go in and do the homework. Don't pick a number that's random in the air. You say, okay, number one, figure out what is your lifestyle number, right? What's your mortgage, your rent, your car car payments, your 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 investments, you know, going to the spa, getting your hair done, going to the gym. If it's uh, donations, tithing, um, uh, you know, uh, whatever that contrib contribution may look like and add that all up and that's your lifestyle number, sustain that lifestyle. And if you have a spouse or partner, sit down with your spouse and partner and figure it out. And then over here is, here's your lifestyle number. Here's my, my goals and wants. All right, I want a cabin in Tahoe. Great, how much money do I need, have, I need to put down? I want two investment properties a year. I want to pay off this credit card. I want to help support my kid get into the school they want. Maybe you have um, parents that are getting older and it's like, I need to help support them into that next phase of their life. So is it you're putting them in the best place you can afford or the best place there is? So when you go to business planning class, if you say, this is my life plan, this is my life plan, this is my lifestyle, this is what I want to do, and it comes up to $413,016, then you go into that business planning class and you're going to do a, a goal off of $413,016. Be purposeful in what that is. So when you come down to, here's my volume and units of appointments, or how many calls do I need to make to build uh, my downline, agent attraction? You know what it's going to do for you. It's going to do this for me. I can reach my full potential. It's going to help my health, my family, my parents, my kids, my church, my organization, whatever else that looks like. So you have a purpose. You know what, when you walk out of the business plan class, you know what that's going to do for you, and you're more empowered to do it. So that's why I challenge you. Whenever you, Before you do a business plan, come up with that specific number. So number one, go in with the number. Number two, uh, taxes. People never figure out their taxes. That's another mistake. I'm not going to go into it. I'm not a CPA or an accountant, but someone says, hey, I need $400,000 to hit my goal. They hit $400,000 and they, and they go, wow, why am I so short on everything? I can't get these things done. It's because you never figured in taxes. Most people in business planning don't figure taxes because they don't want to get in trouble talking taxes in public. So you should know as a business owner, you should know what, you know, what tax bracket are you in? You should know that going into your business planning class. Right. If you if you need a clear four hundred thousand clear after business expenses and and taxes, if you got to clear that, then you got to know what your business uh, expenses were from last year. You got to know what tax bracket you're in to clear four hundred. You might have to make six fifty, but go in so you come out with real number, not ballpark numbers. So, um, figuring out the folk. Uh, here's the other mistake. I know I'm giving you three days worth of stuff in thirty minutes. Okay, I know. I'm just telling you what I see the people who make it and the people who don't so purpose passion priorities are the people who have the most focus and they stick to it the mistakes are taxes taxes and the focus if you put it in a, in a drawer on a shelf and never look at it um it's not going to do you any good but like you know uh, there's a saying out there that goes that the, the energy flows where the attention goes so once you create that life plan and once you create that business plan and you're going to have like an economic model or a revenue model they call it maybe you have a marketing plan I want you to look at it every single day for 30 days. Yes, 30 days. Why? In 30 days, you should have it to memory. You know your purpose statement to memory. You know what your volume units appointments are to memory. How many calls for agent attraction a day? You know it to memory. And when you're that focused and you look at it every day, you activate what they call the RAS, the reticular activating system. And whenever you know that I need these kind of opportunities to make these things happen, you're going to find the opportunities. The RAS is going to help you find them. So you have that life plan, that business plan. You look at it every day for 30 days. After that, you're going to look at it. Um, yeah, great. The 21040, uh, just like the team leaders did, right? So, um, so you every every day for a uh, every day for a month, and then you can look at it weekly, like every Sunday morning. You look at your your business plan, your life plan, etc. And then write this down. Um, track, review, and improve. Okay, so you you get your numbers from a business plan. Here's my volume, units, appointments. Every month, you need to track the numbers, review the numbers, and then what do I need to improve? The numbers tell a story. So when you track the numbers, what are the numbers telling you? When, um, how many calls does it take to get an appointment? How many appointments set 
uh, to the appointments gone on. How many appointments? Actually, um, you get an agreement signed. How many of those close? What's your average commission? You got to track all those numbers. How can I help you as a business coach? Someone says, hey, Derek, I'd love to help hire you as a coach. How can you double my business? I have no idea. I have no idea how to double your business until you show me your numbers. Get the numbers and then we'll know. That's what business owners do is track the numbers. All right, so I got a couple more things. We have a hard stop here in a couple minutes. Uh, give me a thumbs up. You guys picking up on throwing down? Man, Good this stuff. was great. Yeah, I'd like to get one, one or two more ahas here in a second. But one of the things that I always do on a continual basis is spend time thinking time where I just go out of my backyard and no phone, no uh, text, no uh, distractions at all. And I just sit there in the morning with my coffee, with a sheet of paper, and I just start journaling and writing things down. You know, what's my big why? What, uh, what do I want to accomplish? What has worked well for me? What has not worked well? What, what am I not thinking about? What am I forgetting? You know, who can I partner with? I mean, just start journaling, start writing it down without any distractions. And that's super helpful. So love to get a couple of other ahas or nuggets or Derek, did you have a footnote on what I just said? <laughs> yeah, you know, um, and I love that, you know, like John Maxwell, um, he has a thinking chair. Right. He has a workstation. He has a thinking chair. Right. It's where he thinks about everything else. So, you know what? Um, this is one. So this is something I, I have in this course I do. It's like a, a weekly uh, a weekly review. And then your top priorities, a weekly review is um, what were the distractions? What can I do to improve? Which I have said no to. What am I grateful for? Right. Appreciation, gratitude are the highest forms of energy. Um, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to throw this out there because I know I threw a lot at you and I just I truly believe what goes from good to great is the prep work going into this business plan. So this is what I'm going to do for everybody on this call and this call only. There's a benefit to showing up to this stuff live. Okay. So I have this, this course called RTA Life, and it's about creating a life plan. It asks you the questions on, um, you know, what is your purpose? It has a list of values where you choose the values. It has those weekly questions that, that you know, that, that Tom just talked about. I'm going to give it to you guys for free. It's a hundred dollar course. I'm going to give it to everybody on this call for free because I love this organization. Um, we're here just to help each other, right? We, it's November is a month of gratitude. So if you email me um, at uh, Derek, uh, Derek is D E R E K at D E R E K S C H E N C K. So D E R E K at D E R E K S C H E N C K dot com. So Derek Derek dot com. If you email me um, in the next hour, I will send you a link to, to get the, the download. It's six hours of videos. If you want to watch it an hour a day or you want to binge watch me, <laughs> good luck with that because this is what you get, right? But you can watch the videos, do the handouts, work through this, start getting that life plan figured out before your next business plan. I'll give it to everybody free who is me in the next hour. If this is on the recording, sorry, it doesn't count. It's just the live people right here now and today. So I just wanted to give back to this organization uh, that has done so much for me. Awesome. One more question or aha or nugget. Rapid fire. Who wants to share? There's that awkward silence. We're going to sit here with some awkward silence until someone shares. Mm -hmm. sure i'll share i'll share uh i mean gosh so much i took two pages of notes thank you so much derek um you uh, you did why was i created why do i exist there was one other one that i missed in the very beginning what was that first question all right so it's the uh, definition of purpose definition of purpose the the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists Right, right. So there's why was I created? Why do I exist? So there's, there's one other question, but I, I kind of, but that wasn't really an aha. I just, I, I missed that. But uh, I think the aha would be um, uh, the why power is going to get get me through the tough times, right? So it's going to keep, it's going to keep me thriving and building, right? Even if I do really successful, even the good times, it's going to get me to not stagnate and just stay the same. It's going to push me to go make a bigger impact. And that's that why power. So I love the way you say that versus just the willpower. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. You know, we, we have a hard stop, so we'll have to 
we'll have to end this. But once again, thank you guys so much for the opportunity to share. Um, I'd love to just give you more. And if you have any questions, reach out. I'll walk you through it. That way you're best prepared so you come up with the best plan. Awesome, awesome. Well, hey, thank you so much, Derek. Thanks, everyone, for jumping in here. Um, go to brentgove.com. Just go to brentgove.com. And if you not yet signed up for the business planning clinic, I just put in the link, sign up. You got to be there because, again, there's so much opportunity right in front of us. So we all got our inspiration. Time to put in the perspiration. Happy Friday. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Derek. See you, everybody. See you later. Thanks, guys. See you.